Wow, I feel like I just started this podcast and yet here we are already on episode four. Now, if you haven't already heard the news already from across all social media, Stonemaier Games is releasing a brand new game called Pendulum. It's always an event when Stonemaier Games releases a brand new game, which is why I think it's so much fun to talk about. Now these, let me go ahead and premise this by saying are my first initial thoughts based on just reading the rule book and based on watching a couple of videos from other content creators like Quackalove, of course, Monique and Naveen from Before You Played and from Dice Tower Unboxings. Now they have made some fantastic videos overall. It's been so fun. I've been binging all of them. So make sure you check them all out if you wanna see some gameplay in full on action. Now, why do we start off talking about the rulebook? Well, honestly, these will make or break your game. I feel like these are often overlooked for whatever reason. I know I made a whole video about rulebooks in general, but they're so important because these will easily make or break your game. How fast I make a video and how fast you get to play the game all depends on how well written the rulebook is. So that's why I always hark on it because you can have the best looking game with all this excitement and then all of a sudden the rulebook comes and then it just ruins all that for you. And then from there, you're kind of just struggling to get through it just to play the game. So that's why I'm always big on rulebooks nowadays. And I say this again and again, and I will continue to say it until at least rulebooks are completely streamlined, but they are my ultimate arch nemesis in terms of board game videos because how fast I make videos and how often I make videos, honestly, it really does depend on how well the rulebook is written. With that said, let's dive into Pendulum, the rulebook. So the one I'm reading today is version 18, which I think was published on July 9th. Okay, so what is the premise behind Pendulum? Pendulum thematically seems to be revolved around time, hence the name. And I think it starts out really cool because the story is broken down into three really distinct eras. So you have the time of chaos and in here there were gods that created the first world where there was no order whatsoever. And then in the next era, you have dragons which claimed the dominion of all the lands and this was called the time of darkness. And then you have the hero of the story who was named Sersil, who all of a sudden gained the recognition from Gahail, the god of changing seasons. And then boom, Sersil gains power and he becomes the keeper of time, introducing the third era, the time of order. Now, all of a sudden though, the timeless king, AKA Sersil, is gone and nowhere to be found. Fittingly, things start to revert back and then this marks the time of change. Last part of the story, when Gahail gave Sersil power, he also forged this giant iron clock that he decides to put in the middle of the grand plaza of Montbriel and it would run forever so long as Sersil reigned. Now, since the timeless king is now gone, the clock has stopped. Legends say that one leader one leader to rule them all must have the power to surpass Sersil and become the next keeper of time. They'll also visit the plaza, swing the pendulum, and then restart the clock. So that's happened as well. <laughs> now, if that isn't a grand enough entrance for you for a epic game, I don't know what is, honestly. So that's a fun story. I love stories that streamline the whole premise where your whole role into the game is integrated and very seamless. When games do that for you, it's super, super cool. Now in Pendulum, our role is to play as a noble trying to take over for this timeless king. And there are a ton of asymmetrical player powers. And there's even a set, you go from general player powers and there are even options for you to play as advanced player powers once you understand the game better. Okay, so we, the players, seems like we'll be commanding a bunch of different workers. We're executing different kinds of strategies and skills and expanding our provinces within our domains to gain resources, votes, and then move up of four victory tracks of power, prestige, popularity and legendary achievement. Now, doesn't that sound familiar? Doesn't that sound like a little game named Tapestry? So Pendulum is a turnless real-time strategy game or RTS for one to five players, but being the fastest even in a real-time strategy game doesn't mean that you're going to be coming out on top. For what Pendulum is seeming like, it looks like it's best to balance your resources and strategy effectively so you are optimizing both the time that you're using and also the resources that you're allocating in different spots. Okay, so component wise, I don't think anything really stands out um, aside from the stand timers. And that's not a bad thing, honestly, because it's actually very refreshing to have a game gain so much traction based on like no minis at all and not to be filled with dazzling components. From a photographer's standpoint, to be honest, I think it's a very fun perspective because it makes it more challenging to take pictures of these type of games. Now, the game also does come with one main board a council board, five double-sided player mats, a bunch of cards, they have some plastic common workers, and then a lot of different tokens for players and for resources. 
So it's very, very simple stuff. And you also have three different kinds of timers. You have a three minute purple timer, a two minute green timer, and a 45 second black timer. You know, thinking about it, I don't know when the last time I saw a sand timer being used in a game. The only thing I can think of at this moment are two games. One is Time's Up. If you ever played that party game, that was such a fun game, even now. And secondly was Jumanji, actually. So those are the last two games I remember having a sand timer. Okay, so let me give you a brief overview of how the game plays, and then we'll talk about the rest of the rulebook, and then my overall thoughts about the game. So Pendulum, at its core, it seems to be a worker placement game. You start off in real time, where you have these workers that you're going to place in different areas and gain separate resources. Now that's all based on the type of sand timer that you're flipping over. So if one player is flipping over the three minute sand timer, then they're going to be performing actions within that time frame for that specific resource slot. In contrast, if I flip over a 45 second time frame, then I'm going to be allocating resources and workers more often since my timer is running in shorter intervals. After four rounds, winner is decided depending on how many victory points you've managed to collect. Now again, I don't have the game neither have I played it solely based on what I have read and what I've seen. So the rest of the rulebook, I was actually a little surprised. Normally, I'm a huge fan of Stonemaier Games rulebooks because they're so streamlined, they're so straightforward, everything's very clear cut. It's very, very clear that they've had it play tested a million times because they would have these little nuances in the rulebooks that only players playing the game so often would know. And that's why I really appreciated the rulebooks. But what's interesting about Pendulum, I don't know if it's because it's an RTS game, but I did find the rules to be a little bit confusing because it's kind of all over the place. Now, for example, right after the setup, they start talking about game basics and then they show components there as well, but it's separate from the component list. And then they start mentioning rules about like limited inventory and trading and then how much action costs. And then they start describing little sections of the game. So there's no clear section of this is how you play pendulum. There's no kind of, pyramid scheme of, in terms of instruction and storytelling. Like this is the big picture. Here's how all the little details that go into it. They kind of just put little details everywhere. So it was a little bit hard for me to follow um, as of the current version of this rule book. There also aren't any numbers, which I was kind of surprised for, at least for the section titles to indicate like this is what happens first. This is what happens second and so on. I don't know if it's because there's no order because of the RTS, um, because there are still phases of the game that are happening though. Like you're going from worker actions to the council phase. So I figured why not have numbering systems for that? But I did like how they included a full example of how to take the worker action. So that did clarify what exactly you're doing on your turn, eventually with a full clear cut example. I also liked how they talked about the basic and advanced workers. It's pretty cool to give them a, their each individual storyline along with their symbol and their character color palette portrait. And another little side note that I really appreciated was that they included things called designer notes. And those designer notes are a very good balance between rulebook and between strategy. So they're not giving you necessarily strategy, but they are giving you little tidbits and kind of nuances that you should know as you are addressing different parts of the game. In one designer's note, they mention take time to think through what you wish to do next. While the game may feel hectic at times, it is important to remember to take time to do this you will see a return on investment in the long run. So see, it's not necessarily strategy. It's just kind of to address, I think, the little concerns that they've had. So again, it's not necessarily strategy, like this is how you win, but kind of little hints and leading you in the right direction of how to properly play the game. Now, with that said, I do have a couple of concerns and just overall things I want to talk about for Pendulum. So here are my final thoughts about the game based on what I've seen from content creators and from reading through the rulebook. Let's start off with a couple concerns and questions that I have. Now, first, the rulebook explicitly states, playing a perfect game is nearly impossible. Mistakes like this are part of the game. Forgetting to take a move or to take a worker action does not break the rules. So I guess that's my first worry, so to say. To put that it's okay to break the rules and that you will rarely play the game correctly in a rulebook, that is an interesting thought. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. In reality, I'm not a strictly for rules or anything like that at all, but when they're in games, it's a way for us to kind of standardize and compare our actions with each other. If rules weren't set in place in a the game, then we wouldn't have any way of kind of comparing against each other and having one streamlined process to go through. For example, extreme example, but let's say like for sports, they all have rules set in place for a reason, right? So let me give you an extreme example. I play volleyball, used to more avidly, but in volleyball, you're not allowed to touch the net 
especially if you're right up at the net and you're a hitter, spiker, setter, what have you. Whatever position you play at the net, you're not allowed to touch it. What if it was subjective for you to touch the net? Like what if my arm was hitting the net as I came the way down? If I was following the same rules that are implemented here, which is it's okay that mistakes are meant to happen and it's okay to break the rules and to forget a work action. What if I forgot that I touched the net? Because then the other team would score a point, right? So again, that was an extreme example, but still it's like the same premise here. Like rules are meant to set a barrier, a boundary between what is okay and what isn't okay. So if you are putting in a rule book that playing a perfect game is nearly impossible and that mistakes are meant to happen and that forgetting to take a move or work action doesn't break the rules, I don't know if it's the wording in that. I don't know what their intentions are by saying that, but I just think that taking away the objective part of gameplay does raise a few questions for sure. And I feel like this may cause, dare I say, some disagreement in gaming groups. But I understand why, you know, it is a very hectic game. It is a very chaotic game and watching all the gameplay, like everyone's fiddling around with so many different actions. So how can you put everyone else in check? Like I understand why they did that, but I'm wondering if there's a way to streamline that process or maybe standardize that process to make it a little bit more objective. So this is a question that I just want to pose, just to put out there. And I'm wondering if, is there truly player interaction here? Reason why I say that is because A, I'm like very big on player interaction because that's, that's the whole point of a board game, right? No matter how polished the board game is, the experience I feel is very dependent on how you interact with the people around you and how that game makes you do that. So yes, it is dependent on your gaming group and who you play with, of course. So you can have a quote, okay game, but if it puts mechanics into your gaming group that makes it so ridiculously fun, then you're gonna find that game 10 times more fun. Does that make any sense? So bottom line, how the game makes you interact with other players around you dictates your entire experience about the game itself. This is why there's so many different, vastly different opinions about board games, and that is totally okay. That's the whole point of a review, right? Everyone has a different gaming group. Everyone has a different number of people they play with. Everyone likes different things. They like different themes. They like different game mechanics. There's so many different things that go into what makes a quote, good game. So with that said, I'm looking at Pendulum. And when you distill down the chaos, the question I really wanna pose is, is it making you play with other people? And I ask that because on your turn, you're so focused on what you're doing and the interaction you get is from people kind of blocking your spot as you are putting a worker in a, in a space that they no longer can put it in because now you block that spot. It seems like the decisions that you're making aren't really affected by their actions unless they just took your spot. And then you in turn move your workers somewhere else. So is there truly more play interaction than this? I don't know. I feel like it's one of those things where you just have to play to find out. And then to play along those lines a little bit more, unlike non real time strategy games, you don't get to sit there and absorb what every single person is doing, right? Because normally you have turn-based actions. Another player takes their actions and then you're absorbing and learning and trying to predict your future turns based on what they've done. But in this case, since it is a real-time strategy, what they're doing doesn't really affect your decisions then and there because you have to make your own before the time runs out. And then you also don't get to put their actions in check. So if they're doing things wrong, you won't know unless you are from before you played because Monique and uh, Naveem, I have no idea how they managed to, I have no idea how they managed to film, to talk about what they're doing, to play the game and to put each other in check. Those four things while filming, that's insane. Like props to you guys for being able to do that because that takes a ton of skill to super multitask. That was super cool to watch that. But yeah, back to, back to the point I was making. Board games in general don't normally come with a checklist for you to see, okay, did I do this wrong? Did I do this first and then the second and this third? Normally they kind of just give you a guide, right? A checklist is something I kind of talked about in my board game videos. I feel like this would really help ensure quality assurance as you're playing a board game. And I feel like that could be something implemented in future games. So that's kind of one way you can mitigate playing the game correctly by having a checklist or by having people who know the rules as well as you or better and to also question your actions and to see what you're doing and to make you constantly debate about whether or not the action you're performing is true to the rule book. So that's why with real-time strategy games, you're taking those things away, especially if you're all going at the same time. So for me, honestly, I'd be totally open for the challenge. I love being able to multitask and to put that, put that creativity and that critical thinking mindset 
to test, but it's not something that I know everyone is open to. So that's just a question that I wanted to pose out there. So the last question I wanted to bring up about Pendulum is regarding the barrier of entries. So let's say I play Pendulum 10 times and I bring someone new to the group who has never played Pendulum before. When you introduce people to new games, which we all do pretty much at some point, the question that is put into perspective at this point is, does a RTS raise that barrier of entry? Because if old players know what to do and they can put other people in check, new players are gonna come in. They're not really gonna know what they're doing. But this time there's a one-sided argument here because the more experienced player can perform all the actions probably a lot faster than the new player. And the old player is gonna be able to put the new player in check. But does that get reciprocated as fast? And how many games does it take to reciprocate all those actions back? Like bottom line, is it going to be okay for new players and old players to bridge that gap for Pendulum when you're introducing it to a brand new group, brand new set of players? I don't know. So those are just questions that are whirring around my head at the moment as I am talking about Pendulum with you. However, I do always want to end on a good note. So let me tell you about all the things I really like about the game from a first look. First off, it is super cool how you have three distinct timers. Each timer represents kind of a level of power, right? So the three minute timers will have better powers, better resources versus a two minute timer versus a 45 second timer. In turn, the 45 second timer, the black timer, will have you gain more frequent resources. So you already see how that invites a ton of strategy, right? It's like, do I go big or go home? Or do I just manage and play the whole tortoise and the hare game? Now to play off of that, I love how the theme is integrated here because you literally control time. You have three different sand timers, you are controlling time. And that's what the whole game is about, right? Pendulum's all about controlling time because you're trying to become the next timekeeper. How many times did I say time in one sentence? <laughs> And then I also like the province tiles that they conquer because it's super interesting how conquering is done in this game. You place a worker at a conquering space and then you end up gaining a random conquering tile. Now these tiles will have different resources on them and then you can use them to put underneath your player board in order to upgrade your player at different tracks and different resources. Now there are four sides to these conquering tiles and then when you start upgrading your player board, it allows you to gain more and more resources each turn. The reason why I like it so much is because it makes you think about balance. Do I spend a turn investing for future turns or do I try to gain resources right now? That's the question that you'll be asking yourself. And then on top of that, the tracks for the resources intertwine. So from what I'm gleaning over here, you can put a conking tile that gives you like four military resources, but then increase your ranking on the yellow track. So just because you have a red track on your player board doesn't mean only red can be upgraded. You can upgrade yellow tiles in the red column. So you can see how resources here are just being managed together. And I think that's really, really cool. I just love how this one mechanic of combining different resources together and upgrading them at the same time, it opens up a whole new level of strategy and possibilities for Pendulum. And on top of that, I also like how it puts future thinking in question, right? Because now you can't necessarily predict how are you going to approach the game as you go from each turn because each turn gives you such powerful mechanisms to upgrade. Like overall, there are just so many different strategies and possibilities, and I think it's very, very difficult for you to really future guess what you're gonna do next because there are just so many things and each decision is very, very impactful. And then lastly, my final thoughts about the game. Um, thematically, it's super strong. I love how you're literally controlling time. I love the backstory. I love the game overall. It has a ton of potential. I just think that it may be trying to do a little too much. I just feel like if Pendulum takes a step back, and kind of remove maybe one or two mechanisms or just the amount of resources that you're controlling just so you're limiting the amount of chaos going on and really standardize the rules and fine tune them, right? Just take away a couple of things that players have to worry about their turn so they can focus on one or two things at a time. I think Pendulum has a ton of limitless potential. It looks great. It looks like it plays great. I love the chaos because I'm always about chaos anyway. I'm always for PvP games and play interaction type games. So to see a game where you're constantly doing something with everyone all at the same time, it looks fun. And I feel like it has a ton of potential there. So it definitely is one game that can really, really shine. And again, those are just one person's thoughts about Pendulum. So thank you for joining me today and hearing me out on Pendulum here on episode four of Revamped. But I am excited to hear your own thoughts about Pendulum as well. Leave them down in the comments below. And until next time, thank you so much for listening or watching, and I will see you all in episode 